I'm actually seeing a nightmare situation where they're recounting a detail of a conversation from somebody else they've been talking to online. (laughs) (laughs) I like that. Oh, yeah. Aren't you the one whose father? (laughs) That's funny. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Silver and Sensational. I am Jessica Lynn Verde, your co-host and producer of the show. And I am here to bask in the sensational silver of it all, Lois Mills. Hello, everyone. I'm Lois. Otherwise, I like to say it is I. And thank you for tuning in and welcome. Just a reminder, we're in the middle of trying to get to 2,500 subscribers here on YouTube. You can help us do that by clicking like and subscribe right now. And once we get to 2,500 subscribers, we are going to give away the entire collection of the full size of the Jones Road Miracle Bomb. If you don't know what that is, go Google it. Stop what you're doing right now. It is the, a gorgeous makeup. And they just added two colors to their lineup. So we're going to add those two colors to our giveaway as well. Lois, isn't that exciting? Now we're up to 12. This is costing us a fortune. (laughs) So listen, this is an expensive gift we're doing. Actually, I just ordered one of the new ones myself yesterday. Did you? What is the color? What's the new color? I think it's called Flush. Ooh. And it, you know, it's supposed, yes, it's supposed to give you like a touch by the sun. But I love this product. This is all that I use, this and concealer, and it is it. I, It really is just lends your face a wonderful glow, makes your complexion look really good. So anyway, get out there and subscribe and get us up to 2,500 so you can qualify for the sweepstakes. We're doing it. We're getting there. You gonna, you're going to get great content if you subscribe. Like today's episode, Lois. We're rounding out our series on dating. We, I think what we've done here is something very special for folks who are looking to get back into the dating world, Yeah, are in a foreign land because of the internet. Maybe you are divorced, recently widowed, you know, an independent woman who's finally ready to let that man into their life. This, this whole series has been for them. I think this today's episode, though, is a really good series for anybody in the dating world. Did the date go well or not? Right. (laughs) We all ask our friends after. We all text during sometimes. I'm guilty of during. Um, (laughs) You know, because we don't want to text the guy or the person we've gone on a date with. So we're going to go through the ways you can calm that little brain of yours while you're waiting for the man to text you back, for for your date to text you back after date number one. You got it. Well, you know, we've if you haven't been there, you're going to be there. So <laughs> now you've arrived home, you're undressing, you're taking off your makeup, and you're trying to go over and over in your mind uh, all the little things that happened, and you're trying to interpret what they mean. Uh-huh. You're not really sure... You know, you think maybe you'd like to see him again, but you're not certain that he feels the same. So, you know, until you get that text or call saying that someone had a good time and they'd like to see you again, um, and while you're kicking this around, as you said, you know, with your girlfriends who are each giving their opinion of what they think. (laughs) Yes. Here are some signs that can kind of put your mind at ease. So I love this. It's it, you know this is going to be a very um, one two three four five because they're you know they don't really need a whole lot of explanation. That's very good. I love that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, did the date go longer than you planned? Ooh. So yeah. this actually, I do want to pause there really quickly because you said in earlier episodes don't stay longer, you know, like, Mm -hmm. like plan to leave when you said you're going to leave, don't go to a different location with this. So but but this might be like, you're lose, you lost track of time. Oh, this is complete. And I'm not suggesting you go to another place. Absolutely not. It's just that let's say it's a coffee date. Right. What do you figure coffee? An hour, an hour and a half at most. Hour, hour and a half. But you know, 
you it just the time is flying by you you've got so much to that you're both talking about so it's one of those kind of things i understand you know it's not and that isn't necessary you know you've been through this with maybe a new a new girlfriend you know and you're catch totally. and you're finding out about each other so that's one really good sign and an, i love oh, that a very important sign is that you laughed a lot Ugh. and that is paramount you not really... like fake laugh either because you're like oh this is so uncomfortable like genuinely no, no, no. they surprised you and made you laugh yes and vice and you, versa and you made them laugh right and so that's also a good sign because you know both men and women enjoy other people that make them laugh i mean you just do you you feel you know, that person makes you feel good. Um, Alex so. still says to this day that my most attractive quality to him is my sense of humor. And that's a that's a huge compliment. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And the other thing is, you know, this is, you know, of course, you've had earlier conversations. Um, so they remember the details of those conversations. So that kind of gives you a clue. Either they have a really superb memory after they've <laughs> spoken with 50 or more ladies <laughs> And they sure. remember the details of all of them, or they took copious notes that the person really listens. And I'm actually for, seeing a nightmare situation where they're recounting a detail of a conversation from somebody else they've been talking to online. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, yeah. Aren't you the one oh. whose father? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Oh, That's goodness. funny. But then, you know, they ask a lot of questions. Which oh. is also so that's a number sign. four. Yes, yes, they ask a lot of questions. You know that I mean, and not questions that make you feel uncomfortable, but rather, you know, you can tell when someone has a sincere interest in trying to find out who you are uh, without being inappropriate in their questions. Yeah. I will say this, um, and I'll say it right now. One of the things that people often found intimidating about me is when someone asked me a question, unlike most women, I never felt the need to answer the question. So there would just be dead silence. This is, this is hard for me, too. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't mm -hmm. until you shared this before that I went, mm -hmm. wow, I just offer information because it's asked of me and it is exactly. a woman's trait and now i can't watch a tv show like a reality tv show and watch these women put themselves in uncomfortable positions because they were asked and but, they're yeah. un uncomfortable not right delivering so if, some, if someone asks you a question that you're not ready to give an answer to say nothing you know i don't like i'm you know i'm not going to discuss that i mean it's it, that's just you know i I just find that, you know, where that could come off feeling, uh, it, it just comes off to me feeling like confrontational. It totally what, does, which is why I was afraid to say something like that for an, a question being asked of me. Yeah, I just don't say anything. I think that's so much better. I wish I had you 15 years ago when I worked well, at I wish I had me 15 years ago. <laughs> that's but, that's, you know, that's fair. That's, but so that's, that, uh, that is something... I, I really stress. So I understand that. If they ask a lot of questions and you are comfortable with answering the questions they ask, this is, is a sign of a good date as well. Then we go on to number five. You actually have things in common. Mm. Some of that you've probably kicked around in your earlier conversations. Your Zooms or, yeah, Hopefully, totally. you know, if, if you didn't, uh, you know, you're kind of premature in meeting up with them because you really should have some things in common. Don't you think? Oh, I would agree. I, and, you know, I love the people who are clear to say, um, you don't have to have everything in common, but some commonality is very nice. Oh, absolutely. You can always go to that well for conversation or absolutely. share date nights. Oh, you both love the Beatles. Oh, you both love seafood. You know, it just because they're allergic to seafood doesn't mean you can't order it. And it's not a deal breaker. I will say this, a little left of this topic. If a guy was allergic to a cat, it's not going to work. Like, it's one of my first questions. Like, are you allergic to cats? Because I'm going to choose a cat over that man. Well, 
That's I just me. I won't even, should I even bother to say if you don't like dogs, don't come anywhere near me. Well, there's some people that are, you know, like no, there that's are actually, some people. Mm-hmm. It's, I don't even know if that's a commonality. That's a personality trait and whether you want to live with that person. So yes, no, uh, that's a long way to say commonality is important. You both enjoyed the steak, you know, you yeah. both liked the movie, you both are romantics, those kind of things uh, kind of just lubricate the evening, for lack of a better word. Uh, yeah, that came to yeah. Me. And then moving on to six, you know, you weren't afraid to tease each other. Oh, I love that. And that, you know, it, it, it really, believe me, if you're not good at teasing, don't even try. Oh. <laughs> Lois, I love you. you have to look like you've got the devil in your eye. You really need to know how to tease. Because someone could take offense at it. Oh, and even if you are good at teasing, it will be taken the wrong way by the wrong person. Well, if it's taken the wrong way, move on. That's a good indicator as to whether you have that in common. Absolutely. I love this. Because, you know, a good friend of mine, we hit it off right away as friends. And him and I are the same way. We we throw we we throw the fishing line as far as possible to see how much that person can be teased, and then we'll reel it back. I've created many an awkward situation. Don't do that on a date, but definitely test the waters of like, oh, can I, you know, take his napkin from him and hide it or something silly? Is it you know? Can you banter? Yes. I you know I love you know I love to banter with certain people who are good at bantering back. Right. So. Um, if that's, I think it's a good sign, but truly, if you aren't ready to accept the tease back, do not even go there. Yeah, both things are true. If you can't tease, don't do it. If you can't, if you can't be teased, don't, I- don't initiate. <laughs> exactly. I love this. And then, you know, um, did you talk a lot? Mm. You know, that kind of goes along with the date went longer than you planned, you know, because you talked a lot. Unless, you know, there's some extraneous circumstance that, you know, like the coffee machine at Starbucks broke. And sure. You had to wait for coffee. But I mean, other than that, <laughs> I'm assuming that... If someone takes that into account, they're really desperate to have this date go well. <laughs> yes, yes. So, you know, did you really talk... And did you both talk a lot? Or yeah. did you find yourself being the talker and he's the talkie? Or vice versa? Sure. So, you know, kind of, you know, kind of take a... Take the temperature of what... At the time the evening or the day is, uh, the date is happening. And then, of course, when you get home and you're lying in bed or you're texting your girlfriend, texting your girlfriends, you know, try to figure out, you know, was the conversation sort of even? And, you know, were you able to engage in, in, um, another point is, uh, being able to engage in, in conversation other than small talk? Oh, that's good. Well, you know, we don't need to get into heavy. I was on the shrink's couch for X number of years. <laughs> and this is, you know, I'm this way because my mommy did this to me. <laughs> Which and would be a good indicator as to not going on a second date. That's for sure. And so you keep your mouth shut about that. That's right. And if the other person starts talking about that, I want you to really take that very seriously because you know he's either looking for a shrink or a mommy or whatever and you know so don't just whitewash that yeah that's a good point and we talked about that in a couple of earlier episodes yes yes. and then did you have good eye contact um there's i feel like that's on both people too like what's good about this episode too and all these things we're sharing these are kind of nice things to go into a date with um, you know, make sure I ask better questions, right? Um, do I want to tease them? You're kind of giving yourself like a couple things like to do during the date and maintaining eye contact, being clear and intentional with your eye contact can be challenging for some people, but it does allow someone to know that you're interested. So it's like on both people, could I could I maintain eye contact? Was, was my date reciprocating right. that? Right, absolutely. For the last of this, you can't stop smiling and neither can they. I love that. That's a sure thing. That's a sure thing. If you're smiling, 
and they're smiling, you've got some kind of connection. It's showing enjoyment. Uh, it's showing a level of comfort. And I'm going to say that if a, the guru here says... Aha, uh -huh, yes. What does the envelope say? The envelope says that, <laughs> for all of you who do not remember Karnak, it was Johnny Carson's Karnak. I'm missing my turban. Yeah, I saw it. It was there. But I'm going to... I'm going to say, if you're both smiling, you're going to hear from him. Mm. You're going to hear from him. So. I love that. The next step. Text him Ooh. or wait to hear from him. Okay. I'm going to. I'm going to give you my thoughts because I have, I have a feeling I want to hear your, your generation's thoughts. Well, I'm going to give you the Jessica thought. Mm -hmm. I think that it's okay to send a text that says, I had a great time. Thank you. Now, there, 10 years ago, someone might have felt differently about that. Uh, I remember waiting in bed all night for a text and then, you know, giving them three days <laughs> until they texted again. Jesus Christ. But um, I think it's okay to stake your claim, even at the end of the date, going, I had a really nice time. Thank you so much. And, be and being sincere about it. Because there's also people who will, I and I'm guilty of this too, I will lie to the man and say I had a good time because I'm so uncomfortable. Oh, God, girl. Okay. I know, I know. I know. I got so much to learn you, but you're already in a wonderful situation. Oh, so you thank God, <laughs> because this was painful. No, this was this was ten years ago, Jessica. That was painful for me. Yeah. Yeah. No. So there were there really are no rules now. Sure. Although there used to be a stupid rule that said men should wait a minimum of three days after a date, otherwise they look weak. Especially if they're interested. This is unreal that they You know, unreal. it was stupid then, it's stupid now. Mm -hmm. If you had a good time, you should just text and say so. Now, I used to feel that a man had to, um, that he, that the man had to reach out to me. I'd have to say that I've, somewhat massaged that sure into i had a great time thank you so much for coffee or whatever it was yeah um i will not say i want to see you again i won't do any of that because i always feel that if a man is interested Nothing will stop him or get in the way of that's, coming after you. That's exactly right. And that is that goes for every girl that's gone on a date, every person that's gone on a date with someone, even after date five, and all of a sudden they're not texting anymore or, or they tell you they're busy. They've lost interest. I'm sorry to tell you. They just have. The 1% the out of 100% is, is telling the truth. The other 99% are not Absolutely. that interested. Absolutely. So and now, occasionally after a date too, I can remember like both of us rapid fire texting because we had a good time. There's also something desperate in that too. Like a post text more than I've had a great time. I look forward to seeing you again after a date. That that's a it's a lot of energy someone's giving you and a lot of desperation. So um both of you have to like temper your expectations realize that life goes on <laughs> that he'll yeah, be there is, three days you know <laughs> this is not the last resort you know i mean if this person doesn't text you'll never see daylight again <laughs> so you know don't make the mistake of texting and texting and texting that is exactly at, at at any stage in the game just wait for him to reach out. I, ladies, I am telling you, mm -hmm. in all of my years of being on this earth, when a man is interested in you, he will find a way to get to you. It is. And listen, we're, we're not 
being so heteronormative here where we we don't think a woman can't go on a date with another woman. Oh it, no, you absolutely. know. No, I'm, but but I'm we're sorry, also speak yeah. No, but we're speaking from our experience as yeah. having dated men. So, uh, you know, we can I can't really speak to waiting for which woman to text who and what's the negotiation there. Um, in fact, we'd love to know what is that neg- negotiation. Yeah, I would like to know which you know who is it the person is it the askor or the asky? I mean, yeah, because uh, it's all do, aqueous now. It, it is, and but in in terms of you know male female, I I, I I'm telling you, I have a lot of male friends, just friends, and this deal with. You know, she's she keeps texting me. Oh God! And I know she's lonely. Really? Do you really want to be that? So you know, keep yourself busy. Move on. Of fake course, it, it's, fake it till you make it. Even yeah, you know, you know. Of course, it's exciting if you know if the person you're interested in shows that they're interested in you. But just cool your jets. It's a first date. It's a second date. And as Jessica just said, sometimes it's five dates. But all of a sudden, unbeknownst to you, somebody else comes along in their life that, you know, they find uh, more challenging. And that's what this is all about. You know, often it's the challenge that people put up. And, you know, so... Ooh, we should talk about that another time because yeah. I, I would love to debate you on that topic because I I agree with you, but at the same time, I really believe that if it's meant to be there, that isn't as much of a, a factor. But but I think no. Oh no, I agree with that. Okay. I do. Ag- oh no, I agree with that. I don't think we're at all, odds with that. Okay, all roads lead to like how self sufficient you are at the end of the day, and are you meeting someone that's on that level with you, and not over texting, being confident during a date. All of those things betray, in a good way, your self sufficiency and your your self your sen- sense of self worth. I love this episode, Lois. I think this is really good advice for anyone that's feeling a flutter and is waiting. You know, I might play if if I was going on another date ever again in my life, I might play this episode rather than text them so I can relive all the moments of the date. Absolutely. And, you know, here's one final word, I think, on our whole four episode dating conversation. Yes. Just be loose. Take day by day and have a good time. I love that. And not the, you know, sexual loose. Uh, No, I mean, (laughs) no, I'm I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just saying, you know, don't, it's it's not. To go with the flow. Yes, it's just go day by day. There's no guarantee on anything. If you enjoy each other's company and it never leads to anything more, Fine. If you're so desperate to find somebody, then you're going to end up with somebody who really isn't right for you because Ooh. your whole your whole uh, ability to make sound decisions is clouded by your neediness. So get out there, get dating, have a great time. And good luck to all of you. So, Jessica. We just want to thank all of you for being on this journey of exploring dating. We really hope it helped you. We want to hear your nightmare date stories. We want to hear your success date stories. We want to hear tips that we might have missed. And whether you think you should text first or wait for your ask score to have text or to text you back. We are available at silverandsensational at gmail.com. You can also find us on social media at TikTok, Facebook, Instagram at Silver and Sensational. And Lois, if our friends are watching us on YouTube, what should they do? Oh, my dears, please absolutely subscribe, like, add some comments right in the box below, and then share us with Every single person you know. Not the guy you went on a date with, though. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely not. And then hit the notification bell so that you know when we are appearing with the new episode, although we do drop every Friday. But this will just remind you that it's Friday, TGIF. And Jessica, 
Thank you so much. And to all of you out there, thank you so much for tuning in and staying with us. And we just love having you with us. Continue. Jessica, thank you again, my dear. Thank you, Lois. See you next week. You bet. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching us today. And please hit like, subscribe, and do share us with your friends. And again, we love having you as our audience. Stay with us. See us every Friday for a new episode.